What's up and welcome back to another live unboxing with the Razer Blade 16. This features an RTX 4080, a QHD 240Hz display that's supposed to be about 500 nits bright. And we've got an exclusive Razer skin from pre-ordering the laptop. I'm gonna try to put this on, I think, today, if it's not too complicated. Um, we're gonna take the bottom off. We're gonna do a flex test. We're gonna do a display test. We're gonna do some basic benchmarks with Cinebench R23 and Time Spy. And then we're gonna load into Hogwarts, the magical world, and we're gonna get a wand. It's like the wand selection time in the, uh, the game. That's where we're at. We're in Hogsmeade. Uh, we've been doing the Hogwarts each live stream um, for a little bit. So we're gonna keep progressing the story with each laptop that we do, and it'll be interesting. We'll also test the, the performance of this laptop. We're gonna see what kind of uh, FPS it gets, as well as what kind of overall performance we can expect, hopefully using Cinebench and TimeSpy. So uh, there's some basic benchmarks, obviously not definitive, and they'll be doing a full live benchmarking of this laptop as well as the Blade 18 coming up with the 4090. So this is the 4080, then I'll do a 4090 with the Blade 18. That should be coming in maybe today, tomorrow. That might be it right there at the door, actually. Someone just, I think, dropped a package off right now. So anyway, um, let me check to make sure chat is going and we don't have any problems. But uh, I see, I see you guys doing this. Uh, see you in the chat, sweet. Savisto fam says, nice haircut. Thanks, man. All right, let's go ahead and get the unboxing going. If everything looks good on the stream, I'm really excited about this. Let's do it. All right, so um, we'll do the laptop first, and then we'll do the razor skin. So this is the box that comes in. I have not opened this yet, but I did uh, check to see if there was... I already cut the tape, but haven't opened it yet. So let's switch camera angles. Do, do, do. Let's pull the second one, secondary angle up. For this and I suppose this is fine for right now. Oh, oh there is a little box inside this box. Okay, so this was inside of a box. And now we've got another box inside of that box with some air coiling. All right. Boom. Koala says, I'll tell you something. I appreciate the lives doing laptop gaming. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's cool, I think, to be able to see the live performance, right? It's different than just pre-recorded benchmarks. So let's switch the camera angle to this one. Here we are, so uh, let's first take a look at the GAN power adapter, yeah? Because this is supposed to be smaller than most of the other ones. Oh, wow. That is so much smaller. That's what she said. Uh, but <laughs> not. Uh, this, so this is so much smaller than the, the competition. And this is a 330 watt, right? This is a 330 watt power. It's so tiny. Um, let me get you some references here. Uh, all right. Okay. This Mama Jama is for the Alienware M16. This Mama Jama is for the Strix G18. It's about, I don't know, 20% smaller than this one. And this one is half the size of the Asus. Like, <laughs> we'll put this, try to put these up here for you. <laughs> that is such a big difference. Right? I mean, look at that. It's probably only a quarter the size of the Alienware. Maybe a third the size of the Alienware, and then about half the size of the Asus. Incredible. Uh, and they're all 330 watt power adapters. That definitely makes the Blade series much more um, portable friendly. So, wow. I 
I am, I am very impressed, Razor. Your power adapter wins as long as it can actually provide the full performance. Uh, Bravo Chude says, Bravo Chudri. You always review other laptops. Someday show us what gaming laptop you're personally using and why. This is the laptop I'm personally using. I'm showing it on stream. And I did review it. Um, I, I reviewed it in detail I mean, back in 2021. And I've kept that laptop for about two years now. And now I'm probably gonna upgrade, I think, to the Blade 18. Maybe not though, I don't know yet. I haven't officially decided. Okay, so this power cable is not that long, only about four feet long. Not great, Razor. This should be six feet long. This cable, at least one of these should be six feet. Okay, this one is like more than my arm span. So one of the cables is at least long enough. Um, that makes them competitive because most of the other laptop cables are about the same. But it actually is probably a little better this way because that way you can have the power brick on the ground more often and then this can reach up onto the table and plug into the laptop or, or whatever. So that is, uh, I like this setup from the Razor cable and you got this nice default built-in rubber strap on it that the other laptops don't have. I don't think. No. Uh, the Asus one has a Velcro strap, but this rubber one is definitely higher quality. So that's the Razer premium experience that you're getting for the extra money, at least part of it, right? Okay, on to the laptop. Dun, 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 dun. Shwoom. Jamadi says, you really helped with my purchase. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm happy to help. That's, that's my goal. If I make my channel as helpful as possible to people, then I've succeeded. So, uh, this is kind of cool. Razer has a go green with Razer. At Razer, we play hard, play fair. We want to ensure the world remains in an arena. We can all continue to play in with the goal of becoming carbon neutral by 2030. That's cool. So they have greener packaging overall than before. I appreciate that. Good job. All right. So uh, they use soy ink. They have no chemical glue on the box. And wood was harvested from sustainable forests. Biodegradable airbags. So instead of plastic airbags that are non-biodegradable. And the entire packaging is purposely designed to be as recyclable and sustainable as possible. That's awesome. The razor premiumness doesn't just translate to the product. It also is a, makes things more green. So if you like that, that's good. All right, so here is the Blade 16. Here it is. Look at this guy. Ooh. Ooh, that's nice. All right, that's very nice. Marketing, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course, of course it is that. But some, some of you guys are gonna care about that. Some of you are not gonna care about the green aspect of it. But it does add to the cost of the product. That's one of the things that you're paying for because that's not free. That costs at least five, 10, $20 extra a box. Not maybe not per box, but at least $5 probably per box. I would guess, I don't know. Hard to sell with mass marketing, uh, mass production. Items, right? Okay, so let's take the plastic off. Are you guys ready to hear this plastic come off? Ooh, that's nice sounding. Voila. The first fingerprints are already on there. <laughs> Eric Chun says, come on, it's the same design as the past five years. Let's get to the performance. Heating fan noise. So this is not the same design as the past five years. This is a much thicker, beefier design than in the past. So you can't say it's the same design, my friend, because that's just not true. All right, so what else is in the box? All right, we've got these papers. So let's see what's inside of these pieces of paper. We got, uh, a microfiber cloth for your fingerprints. That's gonna be needed. Blade 16 quick guide. I think you guys can see that okay. So all the indicators. 
and a quick guide on setting up the the laptop instructing you to plug the laptop in before you turn it on so you got a laptop in your hands it has a one-year manufacturer war warranty and a two-year battery warranty because there was a lot of razor blade laptops that had battery bloating issues so razors extended the warranty uh, an extra year on the battery in particular to try to increase consumer confidence in their products again. Um, in general, my recommendation for most laptop purchases is to try to get a third party extended warranty from a good place like Best Buy potentially. That's my general recommendation if you wanna keep a laptop for a long time. So that way you don't have to rely on the manufacturer warranty. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. And in general, I think it can be hard to get a person on the horn and talk to someone at Razer. So that's the main downside I think to support. And I had I ran into that issue when ordering this laptop. I had a hard time getting someone on the phone. So that I, I wrote a pretty scathing Reddit post about it and talked to, uh, emailed it to the people at Razer and I they've responded and they sounded like they were wanting to change. I don't know, they offered me a, like a $50 gift card I think for my troubles and they ended up resolving the issue. My laptop was still delayed though, because I had my order canceled and then I, there was no way for me to follow up and fix the order issue. So anyway, so let's see, let's, the, for the stickers, we have a Razer logo sticker, Razer Chroma RGB, four gamers by gamers, and then another Razer logo sticker. So we got four stickers on there. Pretty sweet. I don't think I would ever use the stickers, but it is what it is. Oriolo Beatbach Bick says, I would love to see how MSI capped the MSI Studio lineup where all the GPUs 40, 50, 40, 60, 40, 70 are capped to 105 watts. Wondering if this power limit could be removed and set to max TDP. Typically, no, because the thermal limits on a laptop are designed by the manufacturer for a reason. Um, sometimes you can bypass those, those TDP maximums with a by flashing a VBIOS from another laptop onto a laptop. It's not something I'd recommend unless you're a really advanced user and you're willing to risk the whole laptop being destroyed. So, and that's just generally not good for most people. Most people don't want to risk that. Okay, so there's the razor box. Are we ready? Are we ready to open this bad boy up? Oh, camera's tripod's failing me here. Oh, do, 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 do. oh, that is, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. All right. I really wish Razer would offer this laptop with a RTX 4090 and a QHD 240 Hertz display and at a reduced cost because the it should cost less than their dual native 4K 120 Hertz and full HD 240 Hertz. So if you don't know, basically Razer offers uh, two major configurations. Let's talk about them for a second because it's important for you guys to know this. All right, so uh, if you haven't seen my laptop list, you should go check it out. It's in the video description. At least go check it out after the live stream. All right, so you can get uh, on here. There are links to buy nearly every laptop that's come out so far for RTX 4000 series. You can see my thoughts and my initial ratings, impressions of them here. We have benchmark information for a ton of laptops in here now with Time Spy, Santa Bench, and we're gonna be continuously adding Red Dead, God of War, and Cyberpunk benchmarks. Um, and yeah, so there's, uh, if you, on this list, if you go through to like the Razer Blade 16, this is the exact model right here. It cost $35.99 for this laptop. If you click the expand button, if you're on mobile, you can also just tap on the line um, anywhere and it'll pop up. You can see photos of the laptop, which we have right here in front of me right now. Um, but uh, you can see my ratings here. You can also read a mini review of me talking about the laptop, what my thoughts on the laptop are. And we, uh, we also have benchmark sources available now too. So uh, if you see the benchmark sources section here, you can click on that and it'll take you to wherever we got the benchmark numbers. So you can find other reviews of products uh, all in a centrally located uh, place, as well as buy locations. Look at this place. There's um, one, two, three, four, five, six different places you can buy this Blade 18, all located on this sheet. And we're gonna try to add 
continue adding more links, including international links to the Europe, UK, India, all over wherever Amazon is sold, some Asian markets. We're gonna try to do it all. I got a team of people helping me now add stuff to this and we're updating the list daily. So, and there's been a ton of new laptops added to this list. The Dragon Range CPUs have been added to the list. So the SCAR 17, I ordered one of those last night. It has the new Ryzen 7, or Ryzen 9 7945. Let me see if I can find it. So SCAR 17, this guy right here, this is the new one. Um, and it's available on Newegg for back order for $34.99. This was added. Uh, this was a really interesting laptop, 16 by nine aspect ratio display, but a smaller overall form factor than the 18 inch version. So you get trade-offs there. Overall, this thing should be a rocking, freaking awesome laptop. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, reviewing this guy. So this is gonna come in the mail at some point. So subscribe, be sure to subscribe if you don't wanna miss out on that live unboxing, benchmarking and review. Um, and same for this. I'm gonna do you know detailed reviews on all of this stuff. So. Uh, when it comes to the Blade 16, let's talk about the different models real quick before we move on. So the Blade 16, if you filter, so notice on the left, I just filtered. I just typed in Blade 16 on the left and it came up with all the different available configs that you can buy with the Blade 16, including the 4060, 4070, and 40, uh, 40 yeah, there's two 4070s configs options available. But you can see it starts at $26.99 for the Blade 16. Uh, and the model I got is right here. It is available for order. This version that I got today is available for order. And it's the version I would buy because I don't personally want to use the 4K 120 hertz display uh, with a full HD 240 hertz. What I would want is the QHD 240 hertz with an RTX 4090 if I was buying this myself. That said, I think I'm gonna go for the Blade 18, not the 16, if I end up sticking with Razer this year for my main laptop. All right, that's that's the sheet. Those are the configs that you can buy with the Blade 16. I hope that info is helpful to you. Um, overall, I think the best bang for the buck, one of these is probably gonna be the 4080, the one I'm on right now, because there's gonna be a big performance jump between a 4070 and 4080, but maybe the 4070 will also be a good option at the $29.99 price point. Um, but we'll have to see the performance of the 4070 my hopes are not super high that it'll be much faster than a 3070 Ti. It'll probably be a little faster than that, but not too much. I don't know, we'll have to see. We, there's been a few leaks indicating mediocre performance, but those are just leaks and it's hard to know for sure. So, yeah. Okay. Laptop time. Let's take the bottom off, All right? First thing we do, pretty much everyone, before we turn them on, we're gonna take the bottom off during these live unbenching, or, or these live unboxings. Man, I can't, well, before we do that, let's also quickly compare the size, all right? So. First up, Strix G18. Boom, that's an 18 inch monster, all right? Alienware M16, I'm gonna line up the back corner so you guys can see the front. All right, so the M16 is like the same depth, pretty much, but the 18 inch version, uh, the Strix G18 is basically wider, okay? Let me back this up a little bit. And I'm also gonna set my light down right here, so maybe it's a little easier to see the edges. All right, and here is the Blade 16. Look at the size difference. It's a huge difference in size. The Blade 16 is still quite a bit smaller. Even though it's thicker and bigger than ever before, it's still much smaller than the competition, okay? So that's the very important thing to keep in mind about the Blade series this year. It's not tiny like it used to be, but it's still much smaller than the competition. All right, um, and you gotta keep that in mind when we're looking at those performance numbers because it's very hard to engineer a full performance TDP computer when the actual size of the machine is much smaller. Okay? So, very impressed with the Blade 16's size here. It's, it's very cool. All right, let's put these away.
Pretty soon here, I'm going to have laptops everywhere. All right. So, for the internal cooling on this guy, you can see that uh, we have two primary intakes here and here. There's more intakes here along the, t the side, the, 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 the front up here. Uh, there's another intake line in the vents right here and right here as well. And these right here are primarily speaker outputs, but they might have some air intake coming in there. And there may also be some air, air intakes on the keyboard as well. Okay, so, man, I can't get over how small this thing is. It's so tiny. After using the, the uh, Alienware M16 for a while, and then switching over to this, it is, it is a massive difference. Okay, so it looks like for this laptop, you're definitely gonna want your Torx screw set. It looks like it's a, let me see if it's a T5. Yeah, so you're gonna need a T5 Torx screwdriver, all right? And if you need to access the bottom of your razor blade, I recommend something like this iFixit kit. You don't have to use this one. There is links in the description down below if you wanna pick up this exact kit. It's got a lot of nice features that some um, laptop take apart kits just don't have, so. All right. Okay, so checking chat. Unlike in the bedroom, the size of the laptop don't matter. <laughs> Thicker is better. LOL. Well, it all depends on if you want portability, right? Because some people don't care about portability. They just want to sit the laptop on a desk and occasionally move it. Other people want to haul that laptop to work every day or to classrooms every day. And having a smaller laptop allows you to have a smaller backpack, less pain on your shoulders, um, more room in your bag for like school books or other work equipment. So size of the laptop, I think, does matter for people that value portability. But uh, that said, I have hauled 13 pound behemoths to class before, and it was a good shoulder workout, let me tell you. <laughs> so you gotta, you know, to each, to each their own when it comes to that, all right? When it comes to portability. And some people just want the thickest, most powerful machine they can get, and other people want, uh, the most performance they can get in a still portable form factor, which is what I think the Razer laptops are really catered towards. All right. So let's see if we can get this bottom off. Oh, it's very easy to get the bottom off. Just got my fingernail in there. Is there any more screws here? I don't wanna just pry it up, I wanna kind of gently lift this sucker off, especially on this back side. It looks like there's some kind of latches on the back. There we go, okay. Yeah, that was very easy to get the bottom off compared to most laptops. Um, like, yeah, no pop-up screws required. Just, just use your fingernail and it comes right up. So, boom, there we are. Now, this features a vapor chamber cooling system, all right? Uh, the TDP on the CPU is supposed to be sustained at 110 watts, uh, and the, GP, uh, the GPU should be able to go to 175 watts. Um, so, anyway. All right, so, quick analysis of the interior. Let's zoom in a little, huh? And let's change uh, the camera position as well. So you get a little better top down view angle. All right. I feel like the camera is tilted for some reason and I can't get it to go the right way, the right direction. I need to switch this tripod out for my other one at some point here soon. Okay, so quick analysis. We have our battery pack 
right here. Now notice this might have two primary cells here. If you need to unplug the battery, you gotta either unplug it here or here. All right. And notice there's this little warning right here. Power off before operation. Okay, so they wanna make sure you turn off your machine before you modify this. Now, what an interesting design. Okay, so we have our two primary fans here and here. And I should probably not use a metal screwdriver for this. Uh, two primary fans here and here and our two primary speakers. So let me just, let me just do a, a, fresh, a fresh limit here, all right? So our battery pack is, how big is our battery pack? It says 6182 mAh, but I'm looking for the watt hours. It's times 15.4 volts. So you basically multiply those together and you get your watt hours, I believe. Um, I think it's either nine, I think it's 90 or 95. I think it's 95. Jamadi says 95. Okay, I don't, yeah, you just gotta multiply those together and you get your number. Um, anyway, so we have our Wi-Fi right here. And this is a little power sink cable covering it. I guess it's designed to uh, help reduce the temperature on the Wi-Fi. Maybe the Wi-Fi has a tendency to get hot. I don't know. <laughs> Remove the vapor chamber and show us the razor, Tim, the, the, uh, the, the, the paste job. No, we're not gonna do that today. Now this is the, the two fans right here and our vapor chamber cooling for our GPU and our CPU. And notice the vapor chamber uh, comes out to the rear fins here. And th so the way a vapor chamber works is the, the vapor gets hot um, near the parts, near the, the hottest points like the VRMs, the GPU, the CPU. And then as it heats up, it travels to the fins over here and then it cools down. And I believe it can become a liquid again or at least basically the coolness as it cools down makes it travel back to the source of the heat and then it becomes a vapor again as it heats up and goes to the fins. And so it's basically a constant heat transfer from the hottest areas of the laptop to the coolest areas, which is where the fins are gonna be. Um, now the M.2 slots are very interesting because they're stacked on top of each other over here, I believe. That is what this, that, that, that is, what this is, I believe. I need to try taking it off because I was not expecting that. That makes it uh, probably not compatible with a lot of different um, SSDs, because maybe double-sided SSDs won't fit. Uh, JC says, still no liquid metal, I hear, unfortunately. Uh, I heard that it is liquid metal. I heard, I thought. I thought it was, Razer claims liquid metal. I'm pretty sure they claim it on, at least on their advertisement online. Okay, so screw number one has been taken off. And let's go ahead and I need a bigger, it's interesting, I need two different screwdrivers to be able to access the, the M.2 slot. All right. Now notice that the screws in this uh, laptop or on this screwdriver are magnetic. So it makes it a lot easier to get these little screws up. It's like one of the things that I'm talking about with this iFixit kit, it helps. Okay, so, so there is the M.2 slots. So you have one laid out like this and then you have another one that goes right on top of the other one, which I could see that maybe causing, maybe causing uh, overheating issues with the SSD under sustained transfer or, or really heavy data loads. It's hard to know for sure, but um, it'd be one thing maybe to check that you might not run into with another laptop. Okay, so that's really interesting. It's really efficient use of space. Like there is basically no extra space on this laptop that is not being utilized. This whole board is filled up. 
This is such a stark contrast compared to um, the Strix G18, where there's so much extra space. The Alienware M16 at least utilizes the space to put four M.2 SSDs in the laptop, uh, though two of them are the short kind of SSD instead of the big kind. So now I need to switch my screwdriver to the smaller head. Uh-oh. I lost a screw. Boop. Got it. And that, that's, again, the benefit. You want a magnetic screwdriver in case you drop a screw into the system. Highly recommended. Okay. All right. Beautiful. So that's the interior, the underside. Also, it looks like this is the CMOS battery right here. It makes it easy to pop that out if you need to reset the BIOS. I like that. That's very nice. Okay. So let's replace... Our cover. Overall, I am impressed with Razer's internal design, except maybe the M.2s being stacked on top of one another. That is not, um, that is probably not the most thermally efficient way to do it, and also m likely will limit which SSDs you're gonna be able to put into this system to only single-sided SSDs. Or maybe, maybe not, I could be wrong. You know, I could be wrong there, but. Zenica says it doesn't get hot at all. That's good. I mean, the metal plates on top of them may also help act as a heat sink as well. So I gotta make sure these are lined up correctly. That's why I do it. I'm alternating to the other side. It's interesting because this bottom does not pop in. Like most laptop bottoms, for the last few years have like, you have to pop it into the chassis to make sure it's a firm, stable bottom. And I guess, because it's a Razer unibody chassis, we don't have to do that. Overall, definitely leaves me feeling pretty impressed with the, uh, the internal layout of the Blade 16. Now the real question is what's the performance gonna be like? Especially in under sustained loads. That's like my biggest question right now for the Blade 16. All right, so we should be all good. I'm just gonna make sure all screws are tight now. You definitely don't wanna have a screw loose and then falls out over time and then you end up losing it. It has happened to me before. And it's an easy mistake to make, so. And these screws are kind of hard to tell if they're all the way in or not, so. Definitely just to double check those. Okay. Beautiful. Overall, very easy. It's very easy to, uh, Access the bottom, I would say. Easier than average. Probably the easiest laptop bottom I've opened in, I don't know, a long time. Maybe the Alienware Area 51M may be the only one that's been easier in recent period of time. So, okay, so already we're getting fingerprints on this bad guy. It's got a, it's happening. We barely touched it a few times. I'm a little bit sweaty in the fingers, but still, it's a very much a fingerprint magnet, all right? Uh, let's get the Razer power adapter plugged in and let's get this thing tested. So power adapter I believe is on the left side. And just to test it, so you can go in that way and if you need to, can it go the other way? Yeah, so you can plug it in either direction, depending on what's easiest for you. Um, I don't think you can see that. Basically, you can plug it in left or right. See that? That's kind of 
it's very con it's convenient that way. Not all not all power adapters that are designed like this can do that. Like uh, so, that's nice. Press the power button, and we have lift off. Everyone, woohoo! Uh, wow asks, are you just running benchmarks or going to play any games? So we are going to do number one. We are going to do uh, Cinebench R23, Time Spy GPU, and then we're going to get into Hogwarts Legacy and see the performance in that game. Uh, and we're going we're gonna to get ourselves a wand. It's time to select a wand for our character. So, Can we get a closer look? Sure, yeah, let's go ahead and get some zoom-ins here, huh? So, right here you can see the, the, the first sticker. It says RTX 4080 with 12 gigs of GDDR6 VRAM, 13th gen i9-13950HX processor, 24 cores, 32 threads, with 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and vapor chamber cooling. Let's go ahead and... I'm gonna, I'll, I wanna get the, uh, the backlight working. So I'll just look at the stickers for now. And then we'll do a closer up of the, of the keyboard so you can see it. So 16 inch QHD 2560 by 1600 ultra fast refresh rate. It was Lux says, I really wish this came in mercury white. I know, right? I, think, I always think the mercury white looks a little bit better. Um, but at the same time, I gotta be honest, I think Mercury Wright has much much more likely to um, get like oil stains on the metal and eventually over time or to have like, you know, just stains show up in general. The black tends to absorb those stains much better. So like three years from now, the black version will probably still look basically brand new and the white one might not from all the hands. I don't know, it depends, it depends. I don't know, it depends on how oily you are. And I haven't done long-term tests, but it's happened to me on white laptops before. It was Lux says, Mercury White has always been, has been flawless for me. Okay, that's good to know. I don't know how long you've had it, but that's definitely something I would keep in mind for the Mercury White version. Um, Dargan Mockham says, please don't forget that the Synapse application from Razer now provides undervolting and overclocking out of the box. Interesting. We're going to take a look at that. Cheyenne Abbasi says, I don't care about performance. I just care about the beauty of the laptop and, and the premium feel. <laughs> really? You don't care about the performance? You're crazy. If you just care about a beautiful laptop, I don't know, just buy an Apple product then. <laughs> maybe, maybe do uh, like an Arrow 14. It's a beautiful little laptop with an OLED display. So pretty. But you're not going to be able to play many games at QHD resolution. <laughs> Okay, um, let's go ahead and do the flex test while we're waiting here. All right, so going around the laptop, starting at the right side, press no flex whatsoever, like, or I mean, a, a tiny little bit of bend, but it feels incredibly solid. A little bit more flex at the top, just a bit. Not a lot, just a little bit. To set up your device using a screen reader, turn on narrator uh, by we pressing stop Windows that. plus control. Let's mute that, okay. All right, now going over the keyboard, all right? So this is the area, this is the weakest area of almost every laptop, the middle, the center middle, right above the touchpad. Uh, and there's just a little bit of flex there, but it still feels incredibly solid, just in general. Okay. Overall, really, those fingerprints, JC, yeah, there's, you can definitely, I can already see the fingerprints coming on. This thing's going to be a fingerprint magnet. Um, overall, really impressed. Let me go ahead and get the windows set up. And let me just switch the camera angle. There we go. The 
the keyboard does feel good. The keys feel responsive. It's just the layout I don't love. That's mainly it. The actual keys themselves feel good though. They should have went with glass instead of having plastic bezels. Minor nitpick for sure, but it's gonna suck moving away from the 4K OLED. Oh yeah, the 4K OLED with the touch, dis did it have a touch display? I don't know if you, that one had a touch display, but I had a Razer 4K, 120 Hertz. I don't think it was an OLED, but it was a great display. And it had uh, the glass to glass edge, you know, gla edge to edge glass, and I really loved that. But I really, I don't think that's that necessary. And most people would rather save the hundred to two hundred dollars it would cost to make it edge to edge glass. I believe so. Zane Hansen says crispy quality on the live man. Cool. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. Uh, what are the OLED options this year? Not many. There's an Aero 14, Aero 16. But uh, as far as I know, I don't think I've heard of any QHD 240 hertz OLEDs this year. So we are not able to connect to the Wi-Fi so far. I don't know why. Am I mistyping it? Let's try again. I've confirmed it's the right password, so if we can't connect to it, it might be a Wi-Fi issue. Okay, no, it looks like it connected. I probably was just mistyping it. No touch on the 4K, yep. Does anyone know of some Razer leakers on Twitter? Uh, will you be testing the keyboard? Double Davin, uh, I mean, I'm basically testing the keyboard right now, but. All right, all right, guys, what should we name this Razer Blade 16? Let's hear it in chat. Dun, 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 dun. Slytherin. <laughs> I like it. Oh. Uh. It is green, right? Green for Slytherin. But we got, I, I'm. Let's go. All right, we'll go, we'll go Slytherin. But we'll do it with a G at the end, like Slithering. So it's like a pun. <laughs> the wallet destroyer. <laughs> when will the 18 inch come? Uh, it should be coming today or tomorrow, I think. Bro, you buy every time? Uh, yeah, so far, Razer was talking about sending me laptop review units. They never did, so I had to buy myself. There was a communication issue, so. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and do some typing tests, and sh I'll show you the mouse pad here. Look at how big this sucker is. It is an enormous touchpad. Uh, and I hope the software drivers are good to prevent accidental touches, because, like, it's gonna be pretty often that you're, like, wrist, this part of your wrist is gonna to touch the touchpad, so it might be an issue. Um, but out of the default, out of the box here, nothing's touching, so that's good. And this keyboard does feel good. I like the feel of this keyboard in terms of actual uh, touching, like the actual feel of the, of the keys and the action of the keys. It's not the same as a mechanical keyboard, that's for sure, but um, it's not bad. Wham. All right, getting logged in. Probably will have to verify, authenticate. Set up as a new device. Okay, we're ready to do Windows Hello. Let's go ahead and get that on uh, the camera here. So, 
Gotta kind of do it at a bit of an angle. Let's see the let's see the image quality. Oh, we got a. Is the privacy shutter enabled? Oh, the privacy shutter was enabled. Hmm. Okay. So. When this hello worked, the camera quality did not strike me as being particularly amazing. <laughs> um, but uh, we'll see. We'll do a camera webcam test here in a moment when we get into Windows and see the image quality. Is there mechanical buttons under the touchpad or, or it has haptics? Uh, so... Let me get through this. I'm pretty sure it's it's a mechanical soft press. It's not a very clicky feeling. I think if there was one thing they could improve on the touchpad, it's the click. The click is just so much better on something like an Apple device or or even just many other uh, devices out there. Even like a, I would say the click is better on an Asus laptop. Um, but the feel of this touchpad and the size of this touchpad is still the best. It's on any Windows laptop because it's an, an enormous touchpad. Um, and it, and the texture is excellent. So we're skipping all of this setup stuff. All right. Uh, first impressions of the display, extremely bright, very vibrant, gorgeous. Those are my impressions. It's just, um, it appears to be a fantastic laptop display. I'm looking for any backlight bleed. I'm seeing some black light bleed kind of in the top right, I think. Maybe in the top left a little bit. It's not atrocious, it's not that bad. Um, especially if you're ever gonna be using actual content, but maybe you would notice it watching like a dark movie. When am I gonna test the Acer Predator Helios 18? I don't know uh, when it's gonna be available in the United States, so we'll have to see. It was luxe test, but the dual mode screen has a peak brightness of 1K on the 4K model. Uh, yeah, it does. Uh, in HDR content, it can go up to that that in crazy high brightness. It's uh, it's pretty insane. That said, this display is still gorgeous. Okay, and the important thing to know about the the any mini LED display is that the sustains brightness in most content is only going to be like 600 nits. Okay. So a little bit brighter than this one. This one's 500 nits. They're supposed to be 500 nits. Um, but in HDR content, that's when you're going to be able to boost to the full level of brightness. So if you're editing video in HDR, watching movies in HDR, playing video games in HDR, that's when you're going to get the full level of brightness. And it is extremely bright and awesome. It is really awesome. So, But the important thing to keep in mind, this display is gorgeous already. And I think... 99% of people are gonna be like, oh, this display is awesome, all right? So only the super picky or people who really want um, the very best, maybe, and they really want 4K, that's when I think you'd wanna to go to the other display. But for most gaming, I would rather I would rather game at QHD 240 hertz than full HD 240 hertz, like what you have with the dual native display. Okay, so uh, let's talk about, um, let's talk about port selection. Hmm, let's, you know what, for that, let's get uh, Steam downloading Hogwarts while we do this. So that way it's all done by the time we actually need to do it. And we need to get Cinebench and Time Spy downloaded as well. So we can do all of that downloading while we do this. So, So Cinebench Arch. I wish the control key was a little bigger. Like I'm noticing I'm kind of clicking past it or to the left of it with my finger. Um, let me just make this bigger. Okay. Whoa. This touchpad's interesting to adapt to. So I need to make, down motion is down. Okay, so that's better. 
now I can actually go into here. So we're going to need Steam Setup. We're going to want Afterburner, HW Info. And we'll do the Spider 5 Elite software. Azog asks, how do you like this compared to the M16, the Alienware M16 so far? Um, first impressions are this is much smaller and uh, a bit more premium feeling. The premium feeling is not like, it's not a huge, huge difference though. Like that's one thing I think it's very important to keep in mind. I keep pressing on the touchpad with multiple fingers accidentally. Uh, I think with my right hand, my right wrist, it's something I'm gonna have to get used to uh, adapting to this touchpad because it's so big. I can already feel it, my finger, because I normally rest kind of my right side next to my pinky on the, the side of the laptop. And when I do that with this, it ends up being on the touchpad. So it, it's not good. <laughs> All right. So we're getting everything set up. We've got Steam downloading. We'll get HW info downloading. How would you compare this laptop to the Legion Pro 7, also the touchpad? Um, well, the, the Pro 7i this year has a plastic touchpad, so that's a huge, huge win for the blade. Um, Performance-wise, I anticipate the Pro 7 is gonna be a little bit higher on the CPU performance, maybe on the GPU performance. Um, I think I think the Pro 7 this year is still gonna be a good laptop at a great price, but it's gonna just not be like a top premium competitor. It's gonna be like, well, if I go with the Pro 7, it's gonna be like, a noticeably worse experience. So am, am I okay saving some money for a worse experience? Which is not usually the, the, that wasn't the case before with the Pro 7i in the past. So that's where I think the biggest difference is gonna be. Does that make sense? I, I hope that makes sense. All right. So Steam is logged in now. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and check out the webcam. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Can you see it okay? Can I zoom in a little? All right. Uh, so let's record a little video. All right, so this is me talking to the Razer Blade 16. How does it sound? What's going on? I think the image is pretty dang grainy. It's about the same exact that I've seen on most gaming laptops out there. It's not awful. It's not amazing. It'll work if the webcam window is very small, you know, or if the bit rate you're talking with someone is very weak, but overall the webcam is a seven out of 10 at most, somewhere in that range, six, seven out of 10. Got to go to the Blade 18, hopefully. I'm hoping, I'm holding out hope that the Blade 18 webcam is going to be actually really great because it's a five megapixel webcam, which is, this is only a 1080p one. So anyway, we'll see. Webcam could still be improved, y'all. So yes. Hogwarts Legacy install. All right. Now let's try uh, let's try Razer Synapse and check that out. All right, so let me get the camera set up correctly. I think I'm gonna get the ROG 18, probably a thousand dollars cheaper. Yeah, if you're looking to save money, Razer is not usually the one to go with. Let me. I gotta try to log into the Razer Synapse here. I wish. I might need to set up an account. Okay, no, it's I already have an account. That's good. All right. Uh, I wasn't sure if I still had an account or not or what. So, 
Hogwarts Legacy is downloading. Razor Synapse here is logged in. We are getting 58 megabytes a second on the Hogwarts download. That is equal to the fastest speed I've seen so far on my Wi-Fi network. Um, wow, it's up to 64 now. 66. It's climbing. I hope I hope the live stream doesn't suffer because it takes up all my bandwidth. Uh, <laughs> uh, Georgie asked, do you prefer this laptop for long-term use? Um, I think it would be a great laptop for long-term use. But we ought to do benchmarks. That's just my initial impressions. That would be a great laptop, I think. It was like you're paying for quality. It's by far the best build that you can get on a laptop, even rivaling Apple. Um, yeah, generally, I would agree with that. For Compared to gaming laptops, I mean, there's some others that are competing pretty close. But so far, nothing has actually, nothing I've seen has ever actually beaten it. So we're getting our MSI Afterburner installed so we can do our overlays. And then we're going to do uh, our Racer Synapse tour here in a moment. The stream is lagging. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Well, we're getting 58 megabytes a, megabits a second, 59, 61. Uh, let me know, chat, if the stream gets too laggy. I will have to... Streams lagging, multiple people say that. Okay, so I'm going to cap the speed on our download speed here. Limit bandwidth to, uh, let's do 50. Can I cut it down? Is it going down? I tried to limit the bandwidth down. It's a good problem to have. Having your laptop actually work properly down to the 50s. Um, does it really rival an Apple though? Razors won't, don't last as long as MacBooks. A razor will probably last two or three years. I really disagree that a razor will only last two or three years. I think on average, razors will last five to seven, but some will die early, some will die late. It depends. But. Um, but I would say razors on average are going to last much longer than two to three years. If you don't need portability, then get a desktop. Yeah, that's kind of true. Uh, but there's always a balance between portability. Like maybe you only need to move it occasionally. Then you maybe get like a big beefy laptop like the GT77 or something or the Alienware M18. Um, okay. See what's new. Are we ready to see what's new on Razer Synapse? Let's find out what's new, y'all. All right, so next. Quick access to all your favorite devices along the top. So they have a new tab system. Complete control, easily control all of your profiles and link them to your favorite games. Create a virtual infinite number of profiles that are stored automatically on the cloud. Devices with Razer hybrid storage are also, also can also store profiles directly to the device. Um, all right, get started. Your dashboard displays all of your active devices. Okay, so we're on the dashboard right now. We can click on the Blade 16. It jumps to the system tab. Um, gaming mode, you can turn on, always on, or enable in game. Touchpad properties, you can Open Windows Precision Touchpad Settings. Um, I don't think there's going to be much in here that you'd want to adjust. I changed the scroll direction. Razer Hypershift, you can assign additional functions to the same button or key without interfering with its default input. Interesting. That's pretty cool. Performance Mode. Plugged in battery. There's nothing there. I don't know why there's nothing there. Battery refresh rate, switch laptop to 60 hertz when on battery. I would check that as yes. 
Uh, Dennis Antoff says, do you think Asus will fix the coil wind later this year? Um, I believe you're talking about the coil wind in like the Strix G18 and SCAR18 that I've heard and other reviewers have heard. Uh, I mentioned it to Asus and they said that they're going to get the try to make the fans ramp up faster so you don't hear it or it won't be as noticeable. Which I agree with that. That's probably the right way to do it because once the fans are going, I don't I don't hear it at all. So, uh, but it's, it just takes like thirty seconds for the fans to ramp up. Battery charge limiter. I would probably set this to eighty percent as my default, unless I know I'm going to be traveling a lot for that week or whatever. Then I would set it to hundred. Um, but if you know you're not going to be traveling, you could set it all the way down to fifty percent to maximize the, the longevity of your battery. Which is my fifty percent is the recommended level if you want maximum length of life. Like a lithium ion battery should last ten years if you take care of it and you don't overcharge it constantly. And eighty percent is the highest you want to charge it for a long term storage. Um, otherwise, you end up damaging it over time. Advanced effects are applied across multiple Razer Coronama enabled devices, so you can you can pair like wall lights and other things all to one light scheme. Like I think the lights on the wall behind me could be paired to this, I think. Maybe, maybe not. I know Philips Hue lights can. I don't know about Nanoleaf. I have Nanoleaf lights. Um, system lighting, you can turn the brightness on. Can I turn the brightness to 100%? Um, interesting. I feel like we might need to do an update or something because some of the things are not showing up as options here. Let's see if we can, if there's an update anywhere. Right here maybe. About, check for updates. We're checking for updates, I, th I think. Something happened. Okay, it's downloading the new version of Razer Synapse. So I'm curious what the new version is gonna be like. Uh, all right, it's checking chat again. Yeah, undervolting your GPU helps reduce the coil wind. Interesting, uh, maybe, but uh, if you're still gonna try to, if you're under, under vaulting your GPU, you're oftentimes also overclocking it and it's still pulling the same wattage, so it wouldn't help with coil wind in that scenario. But if you are reducing the actual TDP going through the GPU, um, then maybe. 2.6, which laptop so far has the best screen? The Titan looks like a great choice, but I don't think I can justify the price. Uh, it depends on the screen size you're looking for and the hertz, hertz refresh rate and everything. I think the SCAR 16, QHD 240 hertz, 1100 nits brightness, Mini LED display is probably the best one on the market, but the other one would be like the Predator Helios. 16 and 18 have a 250 hertz QHD. Um, I think it's a, a thousand nits. So a little higher refresh rate. So probably those two are the very best, but the Razer Blade 16 with the dual native 4K, um, I don't know why it paused. I hit resume. Weird. It keeps downloading and then pausing a little bit. <laughs> what is this? I feel like I'm playing a game where you have to like press X to complete the task or something. <laughs> okay, it's on downloading now. Uh, will I be playing Hogwarts at max settings? Uh, yes, except potentially for textures because uh, it causes the game to stutter. So... The Razer Blade 18 you will getting soon is coming with an RTX 4090, yes. So we'll be able to compare RTX 4080 performance in this one versus the Blade 18's RTX 4090 performance in side-by-side -side game comparisons. I think that'll be very interesting. So it's worth getting it later this year so most of the problems are solved. Uh, it's up to you. I don't know how many problems we're gonna run into. So far, not really running into many problems yet. Everything's working as I would expect a new laptop to work so far. We'll see. May I limit the maximum power of the GPU to under 150 watts? I believe you could. 
Um, probably just by disabling dynamic boost, probably in the NVIDIA control panel. That would probably just keep it to 150 at the max. So Razer Synapse is currently updating. I don't know if you can see that in the bottom corner there. Let me also get uh, our color checker and display checker tool installed. I did buy a new color checker tool for laptops. I tried it out and I don't think I'm gonna keep it. I think I'm gonna end up returning it. It doesn't seem any better than what I have. Um, but maybe I just, I need to do a little more research on the software. Maybe I can figure it out and uh, it'll actually be better. We'll see. Are you gonna review the Asus Zephyrus M164090? I might, I might, but it is an expensive laptop to buy um, and I would need to be able to be guaranteed to resell it. Um, that's the trick. It was Lux says, I still can't believe that a, a RTX 4080 laptop is better than a 3080 desktop. Yeah, that's pretty, in, it's pretty insane. It's pretty insane. And these new Blade 16 plus 18s are still quiet. Uh, well, I need to check that. We haven't, I haven't, well, they've been completely quiet so far. Notice the fan noise has not kicked up at all, but we need to see um, what the fan noise is like when I'm kicking it in full drive overdrive, you know, so. So Razer is still updating. We've got like three things installing right now, so hopefully that doesn't interfere with uh, the other stuff. Can you tell about the 4K 120 hertz in games? Uh, what do you wanna know? I think the 4K 120 hertz is probably gonna work really well for a 4090 GPU. Um, you're gonna be able to play the vast majority of games at high refresh rates, high frame rates, especially if you have DLSS and frame generation on. So. GPU one, eh, which GPU do we need? Yeah, we need GPU one, okay. GPU one core clock, memory clock, power percent, GPU power, I don't need power percent, I can take that off. We'll want the limits being shown. So what's preventing our performance from going up? Um, I'm just gonna assume that we can't use this for CPU statistics. We're gonna need to use HW info because it's not worked on the last several laptops. Oh, not that one. All right, we're gonna turn on our frame rate and our frame rate average and our 1% lows. Okay, and I guess I also gotta hit the benchmark buttons. There we go. All right, so Afterburner should be configured. Synapse looks like it's done. Does it need to restart? The Helios looks really nice. I can't seem to find a 4090 version of it though. I'm curious about that price. Uh, so Acer has said they're only going up to an RTX 4080. There will not be a 4090 as far as I know. Are you a friend of Dave 2D? I have met Dave 2D once at CES. And uh, I don't know him outside of that. He was a nice guy when I met him. Just checked the Best Buy Asus 18 inch 4080. It's exactly $2,500, yes. Is there a big difference between a 1200P and a 1600P in eSports games on the G18? Um, in terms of performance, is that what you're saying? Or in terms of how it looks? Um, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. So, all right, so our Hogwarts is halfway done downloading now. Let's go ahead and also get 3D Mark downloaded 
and then we're going to go to Cinebench. Now, someone mentioned... Someone mentioned that uh, you can do undervolting within Synapse, and I would like to try that. I did not see any options for that. I know about the performance. It's a big difference in performance. In terms of looks, if you if you want an esports gaming machine that's a 16 by 10, 1980 by 1200 resolution, you probably should go with the Alienware M16 or M18 because you can get a 480 hertz machine, uh, which is going to be the best uh, refresh rate on any gaming laptop for esports games like Valorant or CSGO or stuff like that. Um, but it uh, depends on the game you play because if you play Warzone, there's no point in going up that high in refresh rate because you're not going to push over 200 FPS anyway. It's there under performance. So now that we updated it, maybe maybe it'll be available in performance mode now. There we go. Now that we've updated it. All right, so uh, where, where is it? CPU overclocking. I don't see any undervolting. Do you guys see undervolting? So CPU, we're going to go to boost. We're going to go to CPU overclocking. Ensure you have the latest BIOS patch, latest Windows updates, and have undervolt protection enabled in BIOS. Interesting. Does, so Razer is going to let us overclock the CPU. This is new to me. I did not think that we were going to be able to do this. Um, you also have to disable Windows Core isolation and hyper uh, virtualization must be disabled. Ooh, 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 awesome. So we need to, let's do it. I mean, I'm tempted to see just like what the default is on high or boost. If I hit high and boost, let's see what that is first, and then we'll mess with the overclocking um, and trying to see if we can undervolt. You don't know if this voids the warranty? Um, it's extremely unlikely you're going to damage the machine just from uh, overclocking because the, the machine will basically hit a thermal throttle and stop. That's At least that's what it's supposed to do. All right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pause our Hogwarts download. Well, yeah, let's do the display test. Let's do the display test next. Let's see how bright this display is. Um, well, that is downloading. And I'm gonna need to uh, sign in once again. So let me go ahead and get signed in. Beautiful. Is this the new razor blade still fingerprint magnet? Yeah, it is. Uh, we gotta get the we gotta get the measurement tool plugged in here. Beautiful. All right, and let's minimize that, go here, and now we should be able to click next. All right, now I'm ready for the license number. Cool, all right, so putting this in, guys, and then we'll be able to switch back to the test. All right. Be 
Beautiful. All right, so display calibration, let's do it. Uh, not display analysis is what we're gonna do here. Ah. So there we go. All right, so can their gamut, brightness and contrast. We're gonna begin the test. And let's start this test. All right. All right, so we're nice and flush. Measurement in progress. Let me make sure. Yeah, the display should be. Yeah, the display's already at 100% brightness. Xenicus with the $10 super chat. Thank you so much, man. I really. First super chat I've had in a little while. I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. Um, it'll help pay the bills and. And support the team. All right, so Spider 5 is on the display. So now we're gonna set the brightness down to zero. We'll see how dark the display can get. This will also measure our contrast. Xenica says, thanks for all your work, bro. Ah, thanks, man, appreciate it. Matthias Bossman says, I have my Blade 16 and 18 beside me for testing as well. Nice timing, LOL. Uh, this is SDR test, not HDR test, right? Uh, yes, because this is, doesn't have HDR mode enabled. It's not possible to do that. So... Good hard work for all your effort. Thanks. Uh, the gift is the difference. Is the size noticeable? I'm thinking, you're at, is the display size difference noticeable? Yeah, it is. I use the i1 Display Pro Spider is great too. Uh, so I've got the equivalent of the new i1 Display Pro over there. That's the one I bought. It having issues getting to like getting to a display analysis mode in the software. I'm not sure. I think it was like bought out by another company and they don't sell the i1 display anymore. So did you order an Alienware X16 any ETA? I have not ordered one. There's no ETA currently. I'm hoping Alienware will send me one. But uh, if I run out of laptops to review, that is going to be one of the ones I will probably reach for probably in a month or two from now, depending on how quickly I get through these laptops. But It'd probably be like the 15th or 20th laptop I would try to prioritize this year. So maybe like in May or June or something. Cheyenne says, this display is bad. It's not mini LED. That's just not true. This display is great. <laughs> You're crazy. Most people, like you understand like a year ago, two years ago, this display would have been the very best display money could buy, pretty much. Like there was no 240 hertz OLED two years ago. Um, so this, this display is freaking rocking, all right? Now, something I always say with the Spider 5 Elite, it doesn't measure the color gamut quite perfectly. It underestimates the color gamut by about 10% from what I've seen. Uh, that said, this is right in line with the other laptops that I have checked out. Uh, for the new generation of displays. So, can you see that? Is it blowing out on the screen? No, you can see it, okay, cool. So, uh, we got 100% of sRGB, which is expected, 92% of Adobe RGB, and 90% of the P3 color gamut. I'm expecting this to actually be 100% coverage of the P3 color gamut, or close to that. Same for the Adobe RGB. I need a better display checker. For brightness, we got uh, 24.9 nits brightness uh, on the 0% setting on up to 470 
8.8 nits brightness on the highest display setting. Um, so 100% brightness. And then we got a 907, so 970 to one contrast ratio at full brightness as well. So that's a little bit higher, I think, than the other machines out there. Uh, so not quite to the 500 nits rated. Uh, could just be my display checker, or maybe it's just the center of the display is not quite that bright. Different areas around the display might have a slightly increased level of brightness. That's the way it is. Uh, overall, I'm pleased with the stats. It, it matches close enough to the claims from Razer to validate their claims. Um, like I said, I need to get a better display checker tool. So I have to keep saying that until I get a better tool. Every live stream, it's kind of annoying. Uh, that's okay. So let me switch over. Let's see here. Uh, who was it in chat that has the a Blade 16 and the 18 with the... I'm curious what, what display stats you got with your um, display i one i pro or whatever if it was better than what i got okay cool very cool all right uh hogwarts has four minutes left what else do we need to test Uh, let's check out Razer Synapse now that we've updated it. It may be different. All right, I'm going to go ahead and make it big. Maybe I shouldn't make it big. It's not really designed to be big. Let's do medium size. All right, so uh, one thing I will say, Razer Synapse updated flawlessly. No problems with updating, unlike Alienware Command Center. Much better experience. It did it automatically. It didn't have to do Windows Update or go through other download links or whatever. Uh, and the everything's been pretty responsive. It doesn't take a long time when you load it to get to be able to use it. And the other thing I'll say is that the functionality of Synapse is better than it was in previous years. It's not as good as ASUS's uh, control software, but this is still a step in the right direction, and I'm proud of Razer. <laughs> okay, uh, obviously I want to see what this GPU, CPU overclocking is like, but right now if, you, if I click balance mode, I can set the fan to auto. The fans will basically be silent unless the laptop is under load. That's been my experience so far. Under manual fan, let's set to fans to max fans. And you guys will be able to hear it. So I'm, I'm holding it about a foot in front. I would say, I would say the fans are a bit whistly, not extremely loud. I'm guessing in the 50 to 52 decibels ballpark if I were to measure it on max fans, okay? That's maximum fans, which is obviously gonna be the loudest. And if you run it on like something like balanced, uh, if you run it on balanced or silent or some other profile, it's going to not obviously get that loud unless you set the fans to max. Uh, except when you're under the full load, maybe. Okay. So you can set the refresh rate to 60, 72, 75, 100, 120, or 144. Under battery mode, you can set it to switch to 60 hertz. Uh, for battery health, we've got it set to 50%. For lighting... We've got brightness of the keyboard at, one, I'm gonna say it's 100% on battery life. Uh, well, let me set it to the default. It was 50% on battery. All right. Logo, static or breathing? So let me try, let me try breathing. So,
The logo is not coming on at all anymore. I think something may be messed up there. Uh, let's do static. So now you can see that it's lit up. It's a pretty bright logo. Wait. Okay, so the logo does turn off if you don't touch the computer, along with the keyboard. All right, uh, something else that I want to do is uh, let's do a few different Let's do a few different styles here. Whoa. So the keyboard changes its backlighting now. All right. So, uh, so look at the keyboard here. I've changed it to ambient awareness and this, this changes the backlight of the keyboard based on what you have on your screen. So right now it's a white image, so it's going to be white. If I go to blue, is it going to change to blue? Um, let's do overall region. This is cool. So you get a constantly shifting keyboard backlight. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's shifting at least part of the keyboard backlight around. That's pretty nice. Let's go to personalize and let's see what it looks like when we change some of the bigger. I don't know. It's it's cool, but I don't think I would probably use it. Um, let's do so reactive. Uh, I don't know if you can see that, but basically the keys. So we're in reactive mode right now. The keys are going to light up when you touch them. Uh, no, now it's set to fire. Oh, the fire mode looks pretty sick. I like the fire mode. Um, so reactive again is basically whatever you press. Spectrum cycling basically just changes the overall light. Starlight will let you change random colors being pressed all over the keyboard. Static, you can set the color to a specific color if you want green or red. Wave allows you to set the wave direction. I, I like I like wave a lot. I wish it was slower. I wish you could set it to be slower. The wheel, this is a lot like the Legion. It rotates around the center of the keyboard. To me, it's a bit quick though with the wave and the wheel. They should probably slow down how fast it moves so it's a little easier to track. Can you check out MSI Afterburner if you can change the power limit, please? Um, or like I'm not, I'm not planning on overclocking anything with the. You're talking about the voltage or the curve editor. What are you looking for here? Let's get. We need to get our uh, Nvidia driver updated. The power limit has a crazy number. It's like 300 and it's like 3.9 million or something. So I'm guessing it's bugged. All right, let me get logged into GeForce Experience and we'll get our latest drivers. And uh, we'll be testing here very soon. Hogwarts should be. Hogwarts should be done downloading soon. Huh. 
Huh. So the biggest issue I'm running into with the touchpad right now when I'm trying to get st using it and stuff is uh, it's just so easy to accidentally touch it with my palm. And that's the kind of thing. That's the kind of thing that um, is it's tough to deal with. You can you can adjust it in the in the touchpad settings. Uh, to do more higher levels of palm rejection, um, and then it's also something you just gotta you you just gotta practice. That's the reality of it. You gotta practice not touching it with your hand. So I gotta confirm my logins here, and then verify, and then I'll be able to be in. Man, it's just GeForce experience. I'm just trying to download my driver. Why is this such a big deal, Nvidia? <laughs> I, I really wish they would uh, make this easier to log in. Um, okay. All right, so we are logged in to GeForce Experience. We're gonna skip that. We're gonna go down, download our latest driver. Beautiful. And for our background, I'd like to go back to the Razer logo that they had. I guess it's not in here right now. That's fine. It's not a big deal. It's just uh, I would like that if I could. Hogwarts is done downloading. Guess we can download Time Spy while we're waiting here. GeForce driver is almost done downloading and. Then we can pretty much start testing, I believe. All right. Let me go ahead and zoom in again on the display. There we go. Actually, yeah, let's do it like that and let's rotate this a little bit. Beautiful. All right, so I like having the right angle so you guys can see everything in all its glory. Bingo. All right, so I'm going to try not to touch the camera now because everything's set just right. Do I drink alcohol on stream? Um, I don't know. Uh, not usually. I think I've done it a couple times. Um, yeah, I think I was something. I did like a drinking game, I think, where I did a shot every time I died in Fortnite or something one day, but not usually. Uh, Mike Mishler says, hi, Brandon. I'm back. I'm well, excited to watch this whole thing today. Sweet. Well, welcome back to the stream, Mike. Um, Cool. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and we're getting so close to everything being done and ready. We're just getting time spy and our NVIDIA driver set up and we're pretty much good to go to do our initial basic benchmarks. Did it finish? Not yet. Mm. 
I suppose we need to uh get our CPU items checked. That way we get all of our information. Um, I'm not sure what the best CPU clock item to check is. The mouse keeps going out. I think it's because it's loading so many things at once. It's just getting like delayed basically. It's not something I think is, is bad. All right. So what I really want is the core temperature and CPU package power and then a clock speed. So we'll try, we'll try those things that I've checked there and we'll see if it works. NVIDIA installation cannot continue, an error occurred. We'll try again, uh, one time. It may be because we were installing um, other stuff at the same time. It's likely the issue. Uh, do I think a 4080 laptop is future-proof for QHD gaming? I think the biggest issue with the 4080 laptop future-proofing is the VRAM at 12 gigs and QHD resolution is not ideal for newer games. Um, 1080p gaming would probably be okay in most games, but we're already seeing a little bit of issues with uh, VRAM limitations in Hogwarts, so that's not great. So, did it, did it download and did it install? It says we're on the driver that was released on 2.8. It looked like it finished, but then it's not showing Hogwarts is unoptimized. Yeah, I do think that it's a driver, uh, that it could be better just if the devs did a better job. But uh, you're going to run into that more and more as games go on and years go on. So uh, the VRAM is probably the number one reason I would say to go with a 4090 over the 4080. Um, that would just be... That would just be okay with... Uh, just be okay with having to uh, down the textures in some games. And then you'll probably be good to go. If you're okay with that, then a 4080 should be very future-proof for the most part. Unless there's eventually some games that you, even on the lowest texture settings, you still get stuttering. But I don't think we're going to run into that. So why is the Blade 16 has so many software problems? I don't think this is very many software problems. Uh, this is just normal setup stuff. And it's been going fairly smoothly. Um, I did show you a lot of the software stuff because a lot of this is new, like in Razer Synapse. So like this is a new performance modes and a new potential functionality inside of there, so. <sighs> My CPU score sucked until I undervolted to 0 0.0010 that gave me 3k more cpu score interesting um so why it, i just i just told it to install and now it didn't install i think i'm gonna go with a restart and we're gonna try it again 
Unfortunately, blades are limited to 32 gigs of RAM, 5600 megahertz. You can't go higher without cutting off memory frequency. But 32 gigs is more than enough. Yeah, it will be for most people. But um, are you sure it can't go to 64 gigs? I'm curious about that. That's a little weird to me. That I wouldn't be able to do that. Can you check balance versus uh, boost mode and fan noise? Yeah, I'd like to do that in the upcoming Cinebench tests for sure. It was Lux says, 64 gigs is doable, but you can't go to 5,600 megahertz on the RAM. Um, so that's interesting. All right, so Windows Hello went right in. That's good. I'm curious about uh, if you're going to be able to get higher speed RAM in the future that goes to 600 megahertz. It might be a limited limiting factor on the RAM itself. And as time goes on, we may have better RAM available to put in. Memory frequency is a so dim problem. Hmm. Yeah, and I think that's part of why um, the GT77 only goes to like 3600 or 4000 megahertz. So, okay, let's GeForce Experience is updating. Drivers, custom installation. If custom doesn't work, I'll try Express. I usually like to do perform clean install though. So it's preparing the install. I'm guessing it's downloading the file each time it's preparing the install, which is just feels, or maybe it's unzipping it or something. I don't know. It's it's pretty annoying though that uh, GeForce is messing this up. We'll just try doing an install without doing the clean install, which is not my preferred method, but. Uh, Jared did a comparison between, um, I think, DDR4, 3200 megahertz, and DDR5, 4800 or 5600, and it just, uh, the, the performance in traditional titles was, in, in traditional games, was not that big. I think it was 2 or 3%. Um, you have to check his channel and check his videos. But yeah, I wouldn't say memory speed is going to make a big difference in a lot of games. Only, only be a noticeable boost in most mostly in esports titles like CS:GO or maybe Apex Legends or something like that so interesting cam will allow 128 gig with 4800 plus megahertz yeah i don't understand the difference between cam and sodium that'd be interesting to do some research on that that's cuz DDR4 3200 megahertz is very low try 3800 megahertz CL14 then do a comparison memory speed's good for 7 zip yeah i mean certain types of Benchmark tasks um, are going to make a big difference. It depends on your use case, but uh, it was a pretty big difference between 4,800 and 5,600. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, Georgie, I'm going to check the, the balance mode versus the boost mode in Synapse. So it's installing the graphics driver. Come on. Please install properly this time. Looks like it's installing. Yeah. Update was successful. Woohoo. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So. Let's get into Cinebench. 
One thing I would do if you are doing uh, this laptop, I would pin Razer Synapse to your start menu uh, right away. That's one thing I would do. All right, so we're gonna do, we're gonna start with balanced auto. That's our first test, okay? And we're in gaming mode. We're just gonna say always on. Um, I don't know exactly everything that that does. Wait, did that just mess up? No, interesting. Okay, so it seemed like scrolling was a little different. All right, um, so we're gonna try auto balanced, gaming mode enabled, Cinebench R23, let's see what we get. And let's also pull up HW info. And bada bing, bada boom. Okay. Once you disable core isolation, you can use XTU as well, which is much more preferable to me because Synapse is a bit buggy and the offsets don't save. Um, interesting. Yeah, I prefer, I'm, my familiar, I'm very familiar with Intel XTU, so that would be my preferred method for overclocking. But maybe I kind of want to test how Razer has it with, you know, everything built in, how it's built to go, you know, like, because that's always usually the best. Um, the best method for testing. Okay. First, we're doing balance mode. Let's see what we get in a single run. And uh, I'm really curious what our power limits are going to be. 55 watts for our CPU in balanced mode. So it is extremely tame. I'm not expecting a score that's very high. Um, we don't want to do a 10 minute test. Uh, let's let's let it run though. Let's let it run for a little bit and see what our fan noise. See if the fan noise kicks on or kicks up at all. If it's completely silent. If it's let's give it at least like a minute or two here. Eric says, watching all this setting up makes me appreciate my MacBook, which is ready out of the box. So the thing is, you don't have to do all of this setup. I'm doing it for benchmarking uh, reliability and consistency sake, making sure that we have the latest uh, control software and driver update can help ensure that the benchmark results are fairest and most consistent across all of the different devices. Um, so right now, our core clocks are only... 2.2 gigahertz. The laptop is completely silent. I don't hear the fans at all in balanced mode. Our temperatures are only 68 degrees. So this is long-term, easily sustainable, low performance. It's like a silent mode to me. Balanced mode is like a silent mode. I don't think it's supposed to be that way. So that's interesting to me that Razer has set that up like that. I feel like balance mode should go up to like 80 or 90 watts and the fans should kick on enough to where you hear them. Um, that's what I was expecting for balance mode, but anyway, interesting. What is the decibel at max fans? I think it's about 51 decibels. The, Razer says they rated at 50, but I don't know. They're probably testing it a little differently than me. If I were guessing at least it'd be 51, 52. Should be a 21K score on balanced. We'll see. We're about to find out right now. 17,777. So not much performance on balance mode. Let's go to custom. We're set on everything on high, on boost. Now let's find out what we got going on. Our wattage, 136, 133, 131. We're getting much higher performance now. Our temps are also boosting up to 90. Fans are ramping up, I can hear them. 
They're not quite max fans yet. They're getting close. We're at 3.8 gigahertz on the cores. This is much better performance. It's not peak performance like we saw. 28,276. Not bad. Not bad at all. That's excellent. Um, especially for a Razer. For a Razer laptop. It's excellent. Um, I'm also going to raise the back like I usually do for each laptop with my external SSD. Just a little bit of extra airflow that way. Um, all right. So our temps. We have bounced off the 100 degree mark, but right now they're at 86. Uh, TDP is 126, 133, 112, 105. We got 27, 973 for our second run. So there's a huge performance difference when you use Razer Synapse and you set it to boost mode, it more than doubled the performance of the TDP going into the CPU. So huge, huge difference. Right now we're, we're dropping down to that 110 watts voltage range. I love that Razer is allowing us to overclock an Intel XTU though. So um, let me set this to a 10 minute test and let's see what we get with a 10 minute test. All right, and I'm very curious what our average TDP is and our average clock speeds and all of that. So, actually, hold on. Let's give it a minute to cool down, 30 seconds, whatever, and then we'll start it so it's a little bit more fair. Uh, this Razer laptop is underperforming yet? No, this is, this is performing as Razer as advertised and, as, and is exactly as I expected it would be. Um, the, honestly, it surprised me that Razer is allowing us to increase the power limits if we wish. This is the first time I've ever seen that in a Razer product, and I'm really impressed with that choice. Um, okay, so we're starting the 10-minute test now. Let's see what our average clock speed, see what our average TDP is. We're pull, pulling 135, so basically we, we pull 135 watts to the CPU at the high end, for our short-term power boost limit out of the box. And then it, I think it goes down to like one, uh, 110, which is not as high as what uh, like Asus does. Asus on the Strix G18 does 175 and then it comes down to 140. The Alienware laptop was 55 out of the box. It was terrible, um, needs a software update. I think it will probably get software updates very soon. I don't anticipate them leaving it like that. But if you use Intel XTU, you can easily boost the, the TDP power limits to be really high because uh, it's unlocked. I love that. Um, though you probably, if you're going to do that, you're probably going to want to uninstall Alienware Command Center or use Throttle Stop or something. I don't know. All right. So uh, taking a look at our averages right now, uh, we're averaging 122 watts on the run so far. We boosted up to 120, 116 it was 106 right now. Um, let me zoom in on the on the clock so you can see a little bit better. And let me also switch my battery on the cameras as well. All right, I'm gonna do that for both cameras. Hold on, guys. All right, beautiful, beautiful. So far we're averaging 116 watts of power to the CPU. Our average temperature is 87 degrees Celsius. This is with CPU in boost mode. Um, overall, pretty, pretty freaking impressive 
for out of the box on a Blade laptop. Not going to beat the competition, though. This is definitely not going to be as fast or as high a score as what we saw with the Strix G18. Uh, probably what we're going to see with the Strix Scar 16. Um, not going to be as fast as... Um, it's not going to be as fast as, uh, what am I trying to say? The Alienware M16 or M18, GT77. This is not going to be as fast as those because the power limit's not going to be as high. Now, uh, if we go through an undervolt and overclock the CPU, which I will try to do that for the benchmark stream, not this stream. Um, I'm going to go through and troubleshoot how to do that. And then I'll, I'll walk you guys through how to do it quickly so it's a little more streamlined. Um, and then... What we'll do is we'll see what kind of performance we can get when it's undervolted and overclocked or increased power limit, basically, which is like pseudo overclocking. It should, I believe, with an, over, with an undervolt and an overclock, uh, we should be at least much more competitive with this laptop. I think we'd be able to sustain probably close to 130 watts of power, 140 watts of power, maybe matching the Strix G18, would be my guess. Our core temps right now are 81 degrees on average. Fantastic. Razer has uh, dialed in where you're getting great performance and reasonable temps. If we undervolt and overclock, we'll probably be able to push the temps up to like 90, 95, maybe even 100 nonstop. And I think our performance will be very close to what we're getting in the Alienware or uh, Strix G18. So audio is not in sync. All right. Is the audio better now? Please let me know. Um, I really need to get a, a new uh, stream set up so that doesn't happen. But please let me know if the audio is in sync. Uh, KB says, hey, guys, I'm a big fan. What's the best Asus laptop which runs all games smoothly? Uh, there's a lot of them right now that can run all games smoothly. It's totally up to you. Audio is good now? Perfect. Okay, good. Um, for the money, the Strix G18 is pretty freaking sweet. It's probably the best value right now. So, Can you check if your power plans are available in Windows? I only had balanced. Uh, that's pretty common uh, for Windows gaming laptops these days. Do you ever measure total power draw from the wall? Austin, I haven't focused on that. I primarily focus on what goes through the components because I, I find that that's, that is what matters a lot more um, for affecting performance. Total wall draw from the power, uh, from the wall outlet can be useful for some things, um, but I just, I don't find it to be that useful in general. So uh, our CPU package power is 87, by the way. Our core temps though are only 81. Our overall CPU averages are 3.5, 3.6. So undervolt, increase the power limit. And I think we'd be able to bump those core frequencies probably up to 3.8, 3.9, maybe even over 4 gigahertz. That would be the target I would shoot for probably with overclocking and undervolting this machine. Um, Adam Swanson says, I appreciate the grind you've been on the last couple of weeks testing out all of these laptops for us. Uh, yeah, man. I, you know, it's, I'm trying to really focus on making as much high quality content as I can. So I hope you guys enjoy it and appreciate it. Um, three minutes left. I'll, I can't check the power plans, Xenicus, until after um, this test is done because I don't want to be clicking around in windows how many kidneys do you need to sell to buy such a laptop i don't know man how many kidneys you got you got a few extra you could sell a couple extra of them <laughs> no i mean you don't really need to uh obviously it's just it's so ex it is an expensive laptop not everyone's gonna be able to afford a razor laptop that's for sure so 
or any of the new 4,000, 40, 80, 40, 90 laptops, they're all going to be pretty, pretty pricey in general. So, the Zephyrus M16 RTX 4080 Best Buy pricing just came out at twenty six ninety nine. Hmm, it's not too bad. Let me check it out. Look in. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I'm not seeing the Zephyrus M16 on Best Buy, so I'm not sure where you found it or what you, maybe it was a leak or something that's no longer available, but I currently don't see it. Um, wow says, what are you waiting for now? I've got a MSI GT 77 coming in in a few days. So probably the next two or three days. It's going to be awesome. Xenicus with the $20 super chat. Um, incredible, man. Thank you for the $20 super chat. He says, I cannot stress enough how helpful these videos are. Your channel is by far the best laptop review channel in YouTube, and you'll be well over a million subs in a year. Dude, I, that would be amazing if I, if I could. I, the thing is, not, not, not everyone wants to have uh, as detailed a content as this, but it is for a lot of people. You know, like I saw, I saw there's a channel out there that do, just do ASMR unboxings and they just like use a knife with like white gloves and they open the laptop up. Um, you know, it's like such a low amount of effort because all they have to do is open it up, install games and test them. Uh, but people love it. And I understand why. It's okay. I get it. Uh, it's relaxing. It's not an information overload. And it's easy to watch. Whereas my videos are information dense. They're like educational content, basically. Uh, and they take way more effort to make. But the audience for it is not nearly as, as high. You know, So uh, not, as, not as many people. The quantity of people who want the information dump versus the quantity of people who just want to see a laptop or whatever. It's a very different audience. But uh, okay, so we got 26,683 for our 10 minute out of the box test. I'm pretty sure we could push this close to 29 to, 30, 29 to 30,000 with an undervolt and an overclock. Um, yeah, so Windows, checking out the Windows power plans. You were wanting to see that. Um, just I'll click that real quick. Oh, let's do a speaker test. You guys want a speaker test? I want to hear the speakers on this thing really bad. Uh, there is a best performance power mode. Usually this doesn't change anything though. I mean, let's let's fire it up and check, but um, this usually doesn't change any power limits or anything like that. Um... Uh, Dennis Antoff says, I know him, LOL. That's pretty funny. This is for the enthusiast? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, that's, my, I try, my, that's what my channel kind of caters towards is the gaming laptop enthusiasts. Do you anticipate keeping any of these laptops you've gotten in lately? I'm anticipating potentially keeping either the, um, the Blade 18 or the Scar 16 I ordered. Uh, those are probably my top two choices right now, I think. I might end up ordering a GT77 as well, or maybe keeping the GE78HX, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, yeah, so our power limits are the same. We're hitting basically the same levels of performance. I don't think our score will be any different by changing the power profile on Windows. Um, so let's go ahead and move on. To a speaker test. All right, now I need to get lock, logged into Artlist and we'll do this. Beautiful. 
telefon. I really like this this laptop overall. The feel of it, it feels great. It's I'm impressed. Let's see here. Uh, let's zoom out and let's get an overall shot. Okay, so there are downward firing speakers on the. Let me aim it. Let me back it up just a little bit. So, for speakers, there are downward firing speakers, I believe, on the left and right, right here, as well as upward firing speakers along the left and right of the keyboard. So, we're looking for audio separation on the left and right, and then we're also looking for um, increased volume overall. So, are we ready? Let's make sure our volume's at 100%. Okay, so audio is fantastic. It is probably a 9.5 out of 10. It's uh, not perfect. Maybe it's a nine out of 10. I think the highs and mids could be better. We're definitely getting some bass. We've got excellent overall volume. Um, I, I really, I, I'm impressed overall with the speakers. I think most people will be able to really enjoy um, their gaming experience and listening to music and watching movies a bit better than the other laptops on the market, which again, you're paying the premium Razer tax. That's one of the benefits you get is better speakers than uh, some of the competition laptops, right? So um, it's definitely a noticeable step up in terms of speaker quality. And I've heard the Blade 18 is also a nice jump up. I can't wait to test that one as well. Compared to an Apple laptop, Apple laptops are the 10 out of 10. I have, I've owned Apple laptops. They have the best clarity, the best mids, the best highs, the best bass. This is still not quite as good as an Apple laptop. That is still a fact. It's just a fact. I, I, I can't wait for um, a Windows laptop that can actually beat an Apple laptop. It's especially amazing because the Apple laptops, the MacBooks are so thin and light. All right, it's time for Time Spy. Let's go. Check the undervolt, please. I'm not gonna do uh, the undervolt because it's gonna require a bunch of changes and I'm gonna do the undervolt in the live benchmarks. So if you want to learn about undervolting this machine, you're gonna wanna check out the live benchmarks live stream that I'm gonna do coming up. Um, Cause uh, basically I'm gonna go through and test a bunch of the, basically I wanna test how to do the undervolt, how effective it is and all that. Uh, just make sure that it's working properly because I don't wanna do like an hour of troubleshooting like I had to do with the Alienware live on the air with you guys. I'd rather do it, I'd rather try to do that offline and then bring the full working properly functioning machine and use your guys' time, uh, you know, use your guys' time as effectively as possible. So. And this screen is so bright, it's hard to see what I'm pointing at. 
I heard it's not working in Synapse yet. I don't see undervolt, uh, undervolting as an option in Synapse. I see um, an overclocking checkbox that you have to change settings in BIOS and in Windows, and then you can access. And then you can undervolt. Um, maybe inside the Synapse software, you can change those things too. But until I check the checkbox, we're not gonna be able to do that. We're not gonna do that in today's live stream. We're gonna do that in another live stream. So we're gonna make sure that our NVIDIA control panel is set to NVIDIA GPU only mode for the TimeSpy test. When do I get the Blade 18 in? It should be in today, tomorrow, something like that. Should be very soon. Why are people buying gaming laptops when gaming desktops have better performance and prices are similar? Or, you know, oftentimes buying a desktop is even cheaper for at least from a uh, dollar, per, you know, performance per dollar perspective, buying a desktop is usually always cheaper, except maybe on certain uh, budget laptops where it actually is very competitive. Um, but uh, the primary reason for a laptop, I mean, guys in the chat, why do you want a laptop? Laptops are portable. Laptops have everything all in one. You know, you might need to take it to school, to work, to travel with, um, or just moving it from room to room in your own house. You want to set it up on your TV? It's easy. You just unplug it, plug it back in in your living room, and plug into HDMI. You're good to go. Um, it's much more multifunctional than a desktop is capable of doing. But if all you're going to do is sit in one spot and play games on a monitor, that's where you might as well get a desktop instead. Um, or you can be like me. You get a laptop. You also get a desktop, and you have the most performance on a desktop because uh, it's a bigger TDP, bigger parts. Uh, and then you also have a laptop for when you travel um, or when in this case, when I'm live streaming, I need to have something that's right there next to me when I'm live streaming. I don't want to have to go over there to change my live stream settings and stuff like that. So, all right, I think we are ready to go. I hope that answered your question, but there's a lot of reasons why people are going to want a laptop instead of a desktop. It's going to vary from person to person. Is it Hogwarts time? It's not quite. It's almost Hogwarts time. It's time spy time. It's time to do the spying. Lance says, I work on the road 60%, so I have both. Yeah. A lot of people will want the most powerful gaming performance on the road and uh, at home. So, yeah, it's going to vary from person to person. In this scenario, it's... Unless you're doing 4K gaming, an RTX 4090 laptop is like, why do you need a desktop though? It's so, it's so strong. <laughs> it's so strong this year. It's, it makes it, uh, I mean, even a, de even a laptop 3080 or 3070 is so strong that you can still play almost all games if you're willing to turn a couple settings down in certain titles. Otherwise, you can pretty much play ultra settings in QHD and still have a great time. So that's another reason. Gaming laptops still provide plenty of experience of performance to have a great overall experience. And that's what matters to people. They just want a great gaming experience. And if you can get that in a laptop, then why not? So we should still be in overboost mode. Oh, our Riva tuner is too tiny for you guys to see. We're going to need to change that sizing. Let's try that out. Zinica says, I love laptops because I don't have to travel to use them. I can game in any room, backyard, etc. Mobility is king. Laptop with an eGPU is basically the same as having a desktop hybrid. Kind of. It's not quite the full level of performance that you get in a full desktop because there are limiting factors like the throughput of Thunderbolt 4 and stuff like that. And uh, CPU bottlenecks tend to be more prominent in eGPU scenarios. But uh, yeah, like the XG Mobile. It's pretty awesome or, you know, um, has less bottlenecks than in typical Thunderbolt 4. And, um, yeah, I mean, using an eGPU is, is certainly an option, especially if you want a thin and light 
and less expensive main laptop, and then you buy an external graphics card and put it in an enclosure. Um, I have tried doing that. Back then, about, what was it, five, six years ago, it was just too buggy to, for me to love it. Um, I feel like I might love it in something like the XG Mobile with like the Flow X uh, X13 or X16 or Z13. Those ones might be a really great eGPU experience. Are there any plans to unbox the XMG Neo with water cooler? Yes, there are. It's just... Uh, because Razer has a bigger fan base when this came in today. I was gonna do the Neo 17 today, uh, but when the Blade 16 came in, like I need to prioritize what my audience wants to see the most. So that's pretty much my thought process around that. Um, this thing is fairly quiet. I wanna point out our TDP on the GPU is not boosting up to 175. It's only 160 which is lower than I anticipated it would be. Um, we are also not getting our CPU package power to come up. I probably checked the wrong box. So only getting 166 watts of power to the GPU. A little bit disappointing. It's supposed to be 175 watts. Not sure why we're not getting that. We also don't have our video card temperature. So we'll need to check that. Uh, oh, not showing the screen. There we go. Sorry about that, guys. So we're going to need to redo this anyway. But uh, let me, you'll be able to see the stats in the second half of this test. I, I feel like I keep doing that. Am I planning on getting any of the MSI laptops? Yeah, I've got an MSI GT77 coming here in a couple days. Uh, MSI has already shipped it to me. It's on its way. So our, you can see our GPU TDP is, whoa, it went to 187 there, but it's mainly around 160, 170, 185, 177. Whoa, it's kind of jumping all over, but um, our megahertz clock, our clock speed on the, the, the GPU on the 4080 is also pretty good but it's not as high as what we were seeing on the alienware m16 which was pulling more like 2400 megahertz and much more steadily pulling that 175 watts draw this is so essentially what i'm seeing here is a little disappointing just because I was really hoping we'd see a 175 uh, watt draw nonstop, um, which is what we were seeing in the uh, Strix G18. I mean, it's not 175 nonstop, but it's pretty pretty much pegged to 172 to 175, very rarely dropping below that range. In this in this setup, we're getting closer to 150 to 165 most of the time, occasionally boosting to 175, but not very often. So. This is definitely going to hurt our time spy score. So this is your current average FPS. This is your average FPS. And this is your 1% lows. The current record in time spy is set by a Razer 16. That may be possible. But uh, look at our score. So 18,255. That's a good score. It's not bad by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not as high, you know, with Alienware M16, when we're getting 2,400 boost clock, 175 watts most of the time, that thing got, uh, what was it? 20, uh, 19,200 or 19... 1,300 or something. So almost 1,000 more points for the uh, Alienware M16. I'm going to try balanced mode with max fans. I'm curious how that tunes, like see if that changes our performance level. Maybe. It might be. Uh, notice our CPU score is also fairly low. That's only 12,237, which is not great. Um, I was honestly expecting a higher... CPU score, I think we were getting like 15,000 something in most of the other laptops that we tested. 
So let's see if we can get the correct things to pop up here. I want GPU temperature. GPU one power is there. There is no GPU temperature option. Why not? Oh, it's at the very bottom. Weird. And uh, let's see here. GPU one usage, let's do that. Beautiful, and uh, for our CPU stuff, I think we needed to change one of these things that's activated. All right, uh, let's do, yeah, let's do that one and turn off. That's not the right one. We need to go further down. CPU package power, I think this is the correct one. All right, now I think we're ready to run that. Man, the the max fans on this is definitely not as loud as the Alienware M16 or the G18. The G18 was a little quieter than the M16, but it's this one's definitely the quietest max fans. The XMG Neo 16 with water cooler will be stronger than the Blade 18. Uh, for raw GPU performance with the water cooler active, yes, it will be. For the CPU performance, it's hard to say. It might be pretty close. It might be very similar. Uh, Talents Tech asks, can you undervolt and overclock with Intel XTU on the Razer with HX? Uh, yes, but you need to set the right settings in for your Windows and in your BIOS, and then you have to enable it in Razer Synapse, and then you can undervolt and overclock uh, at least at least undervolt and raise power limits i'm not sure about overclocking i don't know if the actual cpu clock ratios are available for changing but we'll see i'm going to do that in the live benchmarking live stream axel rays asks how can we buy one of your benchmarked laptops that's a great question so i don't know why it's taking so long to load right now but while we're loading I'm gonna see here we should be able to
Okay, y'all have to tell me how far back I gotta go. <laughs> okay, so where did we get it? <laughs> okay, so boom. All right, the memberships is gonna be. I think I think I'm gonna try to have it started like five dollars a month. Basically, if you're a member of my channel, you'll get a badge on your name in the live streams. As a, the, so to show that you're gonna have a you, that you're a supporter, it'll change the color I think of your name in the live streams to show you're a supporter, um, and then you'll get on the list. You'll basically get access to potentially buying my review laptops, um, which will be sold at a fifty dollar upcharge over whatever I paid for them. So my sales tax plus shipping costs plus fifty dollars, and I'm going to sign the bottom of the laptop and then ship it out to whoever bought it. Now the key, the reason why I need to charge $50 to do this is because it's a, basically I'm gonna have to pay someone to manage the program and I'm gonna need to pay their salary. And so I'm not gonna make any money reselling these laptops. I'm just gonna be like doing this program so that I can buy whatever gaming laptop I want to review and then immediately resell it like a week or two after I get the review done so I can move on to the next laptop and I'm not, sinking in thousands of dollars into laptops all the time and then not getting any money back out. Their laptops are just sitting there. So basically it's a way for me to quickly resell the laptops and you guys, have, whoever would be supporting me would have an opportunity to buy them, which may be much cheaper than wherever country you're in. So if you're in like Europe or something, you have to pay a 20% upcharge tax or whatever. I don't know. Each country is going to be different. It'll probably be a lot cheaper for a lot of people to buy the laptop that way. So... It's kind of like a recycling review program, but not really. It's going to be basically if there's nothing wrong with the laptop, then I would be reselling it. That would be the idea. Um, so you'd get a fully tested laptop to make sure it all is working correctly. So another thing I want to test is try doing custom. I'm going to put CPU on medium, GPU on high. All right. And now we're going to do it one more time because sometimes this can um, – in impact CPU performance. Even I, I'll try CPU on low. Maybe. Uh, my old Razer had higher GPU TDPs when you set the CPU performance on the lower setting. I don't think that's going to happen here, but okay. We can return laptops within two weeks and get money back. Um, there will be, it'll be, everything will be sold as is because I will have fully tested it and I'll know for sure that the laptop's working as it's supposed to be working. Um, that said, the warranty, whatever warranty the laptop comes with would be yours. So you should still have coverage from uh, most of the manufacturers and companies. Have I bought the Acer Predator Helios 18? I have not bought the Acer Predator Helios 18. Um as far as I know, it's currently not available for sale in the United States. Will you tell us which one you're going to keep eventually? Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna let you know which one I'm keeping uh, eventually. Yep. Three questions. When is the release date for the G16? I believe you mean Strix G16. That's available for pre-order right now on Best Buy. I bought one yesterday. Um, there's a link on my laptop list sheet. I think it's for an RTX 4060 with a full HD display. So it's not the highest end Strix G16. I'm not sure which model and config you're looking for. Uh, what about the Zephyrus G18? Uh, I don't think there is a Zephyrus G18. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Does the Strix lineup have filters on the air intake? I had a lot of problems with dust on those skinny fans. Um, there probably is some minor filters, but they're not very fine. So that's the main downside here. Okay, so our... GPU right here is not hitting very high. Sad. It's interesting. It's it's hitting only up to 150, which is even lower. So you want to set, if you want the highest performance GPU performance, you want to set it in Synapse in here to be GPU high, CPU boost. That gives you the most, the most juice. All right, it's time. It's Hogwarts time. Be right back.
Okay, I am back. Woohoo! Let's go. I forgot my wand. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, I usually use a toothbrush as a wand, but uh, I forgot that. Sorry. So no wand today. But we're going to get a wand in the game. So that's what we're doing uh, for the Hogwarts gameplay. Hopefully that's what we should be doing. If, the, if everything is uh, downloaded and installed correctly. The Ravenclaw scarf. Dude, these are Ravenclaw robes, man. Ravenclaw for life. All right. <laughs> no, I'm definitely uh, a Ravenclaw, sir. I was a Ravenclaw Quidditch team captain in college, all right? I was on the Texas A&M Quidditch team. That is correct. I am a nerd. <laughs> uh, it's actually a really fun sport to play. It's like, with, it's like basically dodgeball rugby thrown together. It's like full contact. It's pretty intense. And the bludgers are like dodgeballs. <laughs> for real. Yeah, for real. I, I'm a total nerd. Yep. <laughs> so, yep. It was a great group of people. It was a lot of fun hanging out with them. And, uh, and it was a great, it was a great bit of fun getting exercise and playing a fun sport. Wow. I got to turn the speakers down. It's a bit loud. <laughs> Brooms included. Yes. You had to have a broom between your legs, so it was a one-armed sport. You had to have one hand on your broom at all times, so that was part of the rule. And then you would run around with a broom between your legs. And <laughs> I'm not kidding. And so, uh, and there was a snitch. There was a guy that would, that would, <laughs> so silly sounding. Okay, so there was a guy that would show up dressed all in yellow, okay? So he would, he would wear yellow spandex, top to bottom, and he would have a tennis ball in a sock hanging out his shorts in the back. And the two seekers uh, would have to get the tennis ball from his, the, his back and that would end the game. Now the snitch, when the game started, he would literally get like a five minute head start to run in whatever direction he wants to run in on the college campus. And then the two seekers have to run all over college campus trying to find the snitch and if they get the snitch, it's worth 250 points. And then there's hoops on each side of the field and you'd throw the quaffle through the hoops and you'd get 10 points for each uh, time you scored. So it's kind of like basketball mixed with dodgeball, mixed with rugby. And um, yeah, it was fiercely competitive. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. Okay. Let's do it. We're gonna have to mess with the settings. We're going to have to mess with the settings. All right. So looks like the camera angle is a bit off. I'm probably going to need to relocate the camera to be right here. This to be right here. Bingo. Razor might have spicy pillows this gen, like they always had. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. I am, I'm overall impressed with this Razor Blade. I haven't done the full testing yet with the benchmarking, but, um, but overall, still very impressed. All right, we need to up the no cap on the frame rate. All right, that's better. Whew, that cap was really annoying. All right, so uh, the other thing we need to do, we need to start testing. Well, let's see what it's like right now. Out of the box. So right now we're not getting any, well, yep, no, we're still getting some 1% FPS drops. You can see our memory right here is up to 10 gigs used, over 10 gigs used and Basically, we run out of VRAM and it starts, it's gonna start stuttering on us. So, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set everything to ultra except texture quality. We're gonna just drop it to low. And honestly, I, I can't, it's the lowest textures still look pretty dang good. It's kind of hard to tell. Um, you can tell, but yeah. 
Is that a dead pixel area? Where? Where are you seeing dead pixels? I don't see any dead pixels so far. I haven't noticed any. Okay, uh, we need to go into all of Anders to get our wand. Let's see where it is. I can't I remember. Yeah, it's just up ahead. Middle right. No, I don't see any. I don't see any dead pixels or bright pixels or anything. Maybe it's just an artifact of the camera or something. I don't know. Okay, here we go. I'm going to turn the sound up real loud so you guys can hear the audio quality and everything, okay? I'll be right with... Ah, it's you. Um, just a moment, please. Uh, hello, sir. I'm looking for, for a new wand. Yes, it's about time. Yes, uh, about time. Well, you're our new fifth-year student, are you not? Oh, what am I saying? Of course you are. Gerbold Ollivander's the name. But of course, you'll have heard of the Ollivanders, I'm sure. Finest wand makers in the world. It's a pleasure to meet you, truly. Now, come with me. Let's find you the perfect one, shall we? Mm, uh, no, 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 not you. Um, ah, yes, yes. Notice that we're getting 150 oh, FPS. On. 83 1% lows. It's much better on our 1% lows now that we turn textures down. Yeah, give this one a try. Well, go ahead, swish. Hmm, how odd. Uh, once more, come on, really swish it. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> well, this isn't a good match at all, is it? <laughs> does this laptop have advanced Optimus? Yes, worry. it does. No, not you. Uh, uh, hmm, perhaps. Yes. A rare wood, 13 and 3 quarter inches, dragon heart string. I want to... Let's give this one a try. I want to change the text to be a little smaller. There. Looks like it's back to the shelf for you. This is proving to be trickier than I had anticipated. How perplexing. Um, where are you? Perhaps you? Ah, there you are. So our... Our CPU is pulling 63 watts, which is good. Our GPU is only pulling 140 to like 160 watts, I've noticed. So not as high a wattage as what we're seeing. That said, we're only hitting 90 something percent GPU utilization. Oh, so here's where we can customize our wand. How intriguing. Um, hmm, I like that one. That one looks cool. So you can change the type of wood. Curious indeed. Nine and a half inches, 14 and a half inches. What does the wand size say about you as a person? I don't know. <sighs> uh, 12 inches, How quite bendy. Let's do that. And let's do, uh, is there cherry? We'll do cherry wood. And we'll do a, uh, phoenix ah, feather. Phoenix feather. Exceptionally rare. And a call with a strong sense of initiative. Nice. Size matters. What do you think? God. Daniel Barakeet says, my blade 16, 4K 120 is in my hands. Congrats, man. beginning of a bright and magical future. <laughs> ah. 
Now, how did that feel? Good. Different. I sensed a sort of surge of some kind. A match. Your connection seemed particularly powerful. The right wand will learn from you, just as you learn from it. I'm eager to try it out. Of course. And a phoenix feather core is terribly selective. This will be an excellent match indeed. And the bond between you and your wand should only grow stronger. Do not be surprised at your new wand's ability to perceive your intentions, particularly in a moment of need. That sounds wonderful, Mr. Ollivander. I'll let you get to it. Duke! Okay, so, um... So one benchmark area that I thought would be good would be Hogsmeade. Just running around Hogsmeade and, uh, cause it's a kind of a, it's a really complex environment. Uh, now that that little cutscene's over, like, I'll, I'll turn the sound down again and try to answer some questions in chat. Um, can we only play as a boy in the game? No, you can play as a boy or a girl. And there's lots of different uh, options. So running up this road, I'm gonna, so I accidentally touched the touchpad there. That's again, one of the downsides of having a huge touchpad. So starting from this bridge, I'm gonna try running up this road. So we're sprinting up the road. And we'll just keep following the road to the left and then to the right. So we're getting 128 FPS. And we'll stop over here at this stand right here. Boom. Okay, so 128.42. Um, and I'm gonna, I'm also gonna see if I can do a save game here. But uh, I'm also going to load up the central hall and do the same test that we've been doing. The only difference between this test and the other tests is that. Uh, The main thing is, uh, we have the we turn down textures to be low instead of high. Um, we don't want great hall. We want I thought we already came over here. Oh, we have to do the mission before we can That's why. We have to do the mission before we're allowed to do that. Um, so we have to complete everything at Hogwarts before we're allowed to leave. Sorry, we have to complete everything at Hogsmeade before we can leave Hogsmeade. That's why it's not letting us teleport. We should have been able to teleport over there. Would you expect uh, PWE dominance if connected to an external monitor? I'm not sure what you mean, PWE dominance. Uh, what do you think about the Aura 17X this year? I might buy it. I think it looks very promising. Okay, so that's... That's the... Wrong load. We want to go back to... I want to go back like to over here, I think. How's the temperature on the palm rest and keyboard? Uh, it is warming up. This is a fact. It is sad. I was, I, you know, I think this might be one of the biggest differences between a Blade 16 and a Blade 18. The Blade 16 does not have the third fan in the middle of the back of the chassis, blowing air through the chassis and out the back. And right now my wrist rest is quite warm. It's not too hot to the touch. Um, it's not like uncomfortably hot, but it is warmer than I would like, without a doubt. So central hall, there we go. Uh, what do you think about the... All right, sorry, I'm gonna go back and looking over the chat. I would consider buying a new one if there was an 18 inch Lenovo. Uh, that's an interesting thought. I think, I think Lenovo really is gonna miss out on the market share if they don't offer an 18 inch laptop soon. Okay, so we're gonna do the same test. Uh, through here, out this door. There is still a fairly low 1% low, but the actual stuttering is much, much reduced. 
Okay, so we got 141.18, which is less. That is less than what we were getting in uh, in previous in previous laptops. I think we were getting like closer to 150, uh, 152, 155, or something like that in the same test. Nick says, I've owned Blades, but the other ones died in the last two years, within two years. That sucks, man. That's bad luck. I don't think Blades are going to die that often frequently like that. Any laptop can die, though. Um, okay, so... What's our GPU temp? Our GPU temperature is 58 degrees. Our CPU is 82. We do high. Does that change anything? Hmm. Yeah, so uh, you definitely want to be in boost mode, I think, for the best performance. But I'm going to do another test here. One more test just to verify the results. And then we're going to turn off DLSS. Uh, and frame generation, we're gonna do frame generation off first and then turn off DLSS and do raw rasterization. Okay, so 141.60, it's about the same. Is there a risk of backlight bleed in the mini LED? Uh, I don't think there's any more risk of backlight bleed than any normal laptop because the, um, the way it works, the mini LEDs can completely turn off. Um, that's my understanding. All right, so we're gonna turn frame generation off. So the first test was with frame generation and DLSS on quality, everything on ultra except textures. So now no frame generation. Let's see what we get. How many heat pipes does this have? It has none. It uses a vapor chamber cooling system for both the CPU and the GPU. It's interesting, the wattage we're pulling on the GPU went way down to like the 130s, 140s. Our GPU utilization is not nearly as high. We only got 84.39. Let's go back. Would you go from an Alienware X15 R1 3070 to the M16? That would be a pretty big upgrade. Uh, but I wouldn't necessarily stress it unless you think you're you could really benefit from the increased performance um, A 3070 is still pretty strong this generation or in the current set of games. So uh, it's up to you though So last test we got 8439. Let's go DLSS is off frame generation is off Now let's try running through Why is our, did it actually save? Cause we want none, I guess. It's like the settings were not correct. Yeah, we're getting like the same performance. Do you know about the i9-13 980HX and the Razer 1618? Uh, it should be very similar to what we got in this. It should be very similar to what we have in this, but it's just, uh, Okay, I'm just checking because it seems like it's different. Um, you should get just slightly better performance in the 13980 version. Uh, how do you think this will compare to the XMG laptops temperature and FPS wise without their liquid cooler? Um, I think the XMG laptops are gonna be a little bit faster out of the box after you tune this. The, well, the XMG laptops should definitely be faster out of the box, especially for GPU uh, power limit. That's going to be the biggest difference, I think. Okay, so we got 7327 with no DLSS or frame gen. Um, overall, let's let's do some overall takes on this uh, and before we end the live stream, all right? And I'll answer any questions as well. So, 
All right. Uh, so how do I think that this will compare to the XMG laptops temperature and FPS wise? I think the XMG laptops are gonna have higher levels of performance. They are thicker uh, and bigger laptops though, and it makes sense. Um, they're also gonna be noisier. The performance will be better. Not huge gap in performance, but there will be a gap, I think. On the liquid cooler, the XMG laptops will be dramatically faster. Like a noticeable like 10, 15, 20% bump, I think, um, for the same specs. Uh, let's see here. Um, all right. So let's talk about overall impressions. Build quality is rigid. It's really great build quality. The display is gorgeous. It's fantastic. The keyboard feels good. The touchpad is great. The touchpad's large, though. I kept doing accidental touches on the touchpad. Um, that's the biggest drawback so far, in my opinion, on the touchpad. I dislike the arrow keys on the keyboard as well, but um, overall, the keyboard backlight's great. Synapse has been dramatically improved and had a great experience in the software side of things on the Razer Synapse. Um, the laptop chassis as a whole heated up quite a lot. The wrist rest is warm. It's very warm. Um, I would say uncomfortably warm if you're gonna game with your hand on it. It's not so warm that you can't game with it. Uh, you can, but um, at least in this over boost, high performance mode, this is a warm wrist rest, which may turn a lot of people off from using this Blade 16. I personally, would not buy this Blade 16 because of the wrist rest getting so warm. Because um, I, when I game on my laptop, I'm usually using the, the built-in keyboard. Um, so having a warm wrist rest, it's a deal breaker for me personally when you're gaming. Um, I'm hoping the Blade 18 has a cooler wrist rest because it has a third fan in the chassis blowing air through the fan, uh, blowing air through the chassis. Hopefully that'll keep the chassis much cooler overall. Um, CPU performance wise in Cinebench was impressive for the blade size, not quite as fast as the fastest laptop so far that we've tested, but it's up there. And because you can under volt and overclock by increasing the TDP, I think the performance will get even better with more testing. Fan noise on the Blade 16 was excellent. Um, the, the quietest laptops so far that I've tested out of these three, the Alienware M16 and Strix G18, um, in-game performance was lower than the Alienware M16 and G18 because the TDPs on this laptop are lower. They're not 175. They're more like 150 to 160 uh, in actual gameplay. And in Time Spy as well, our score was lower because the TDP was lower. Um, overall, I still think a lot of people are going to love the Blade 16, but I really wish they could fix the hot chassis that i think is the biggest drawback right now for the blade 16 versus the blade uh versus the, the alienware m16 and the strix g18 the wrist rest stayed cool in that laptop they had four fans in the alienware m16 and three fans in the strix g18 so the whole whole chassis stays much cooler plus the keyboard decks on both of those are not metal so they they tend to not become a heat sink and get super hot um all right so taking a few questions uh, will they not run a 13980 HX version? The Razor and R Sad Razor Sad. Um, I believe they are going to do a 13980 version at a later time. They just aren't initially offering it. So you just got to be patient for that. Which one would I buy? Alienware M16 or Blade 16? I would go with an M16 because of the cooler keyboard deck. That's my honest opinion. The Blade 16, if you can handle a hot or warm, very like a, a, a moderately warm wrist rest uh, when gaming, the Blade 16, I think, is going to be a, a really fantastic laptop. Um, plus, the performance on the M M16 is better. Uh, it's a higher performance overall machine. So if I were to pick between the two, I'd go M16. The display on the Blade 16 is better, though. Uh, is there a 4090 Alienware? Not yet that I know of, but I'm sure it's going to come. You just got to be patient. Um, I'm sure Alienware and Dell will la launch a 4090 variant. Uh, which one would I choose, Razer 18 or Scar 18? That one's still up for debate because the, the Razer Blade 18 does have a third fan in it, and uh, we'll see when I get to testing it what I think. Um, 
18 inch too heavy to carry around in a backpack for school and college every day. I would say the Blade 18 is not too heavy and too big. The Scar 18 is not too heavy or too big. Uh, the Scar 18 is pretty large though. Ideally, if you're gonna carry a laptop around all the time, I'd probably recommend a 16 inch in general though, because it's lighter weight and it's a better overall size. Um, will a skin help? Probably. Oh, we never did the skin. Let's at least take out the skin and take a look. All right, so this, this is the razor skin. Let's open it up. Watch out. So this is a limited edition for people who pre-ordered the Blade 16 only. Microfiber cloth. And then, so here's the cutouts that you need to be able to put on there. And this is, I think, the back of the cutouts. So this looks like a really sick skin. Cool. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do this on the live stream today, but uh, the skin looks like a really high quality skin. I'm gonna give Razor props on that. Um, chat, if you don't have any other questions, we're gonna call it. So be looking for channel memberships soon on the channel. So, um, so if you wanna be able to buy laptops from me, that's gonna be the best way to do that. If you wanna get any review units that have been sold out or a limited availability, or you just want a signature signed unit or it's cheaper than buying it in your country, whatever. Um, so keep an eye out for memberships, channel memberships. Does the fan vent still hit the fan? Does the fan vent still hit the fan itself when pushed on? Are you talking about on the bottom? Uh, yes. I just pushed on the, kind of pushed up the metal and it did brush the fan. Um, yeah. Audi 157, do you know what type of cooling is used in the M15 R7? Not off the top of my head, sorry. Uh, Do I see the heat being messed up on the screen? So uh, if you close the screen, the heat just comes out the back of the laptop. It doesn't hit the screen um, at all. So I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I think the cooling will probably actually be a little better when it's closed, probably. Um, okay. I think that's all of the uh, questions for today. Thank you so much for stopping by the live stream and I'll hopefully have another live stream for you guys soon, maybe tomorrow afternoon. Um, I hope you guys found this super, super helpful and can help you decide which laptop's right for you. Uh, be sure to go check out the laptop list. If you haven't already, there are tons of laptops on here with links and ratings and interesting stuff to look at. Um, and we're updating it daily. So if you're looking for a laptop to come into stock, you can hit the follow list button and you'll get email notifications on the stock updates. So uh, which laptops came into stock for the day, stuff like that. So. Shabam, Shabuya. I'll see you in the next one. Brandon, out.